Hey Osmo, welcome to Bilgi Sport YouTube channel. This is the first video of academic talks and I want to thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you, Srat. I'm happy to be here. Talk to talk to you guys. Thank you. As you know, because of the coronavirus, we are trying to stay at home and trying to do everything online. So how do you spend your time during these days? I want to learn that. Uh, my days are pretty much the same. Same, same, but a little bit different. Uh, each day I'm working home and um, as a dining area and, and a working area <laughs> during the day. So, um, um, yeah, just trying to keep the distance, social distance as, as well as possible in order to uh, stay healthy and keep others healthy as well. So that, that is now the, the thing that we need to consider in our everyday lives. So trying to do some sports outdoors as well. So luckily we are heading towards summer at the moment and, and you might see from the window behind me that it's, it's, <laughs> it's a sunny day. It's getting a little warmer all the time. So this is one of the best times in a year, uh, I think we get it more light, more sun, and uh, outdoor sports possibilities are, are um, getting uh, better again. Yes, thank you. It's a great weather for running, especially in yes. Moscow. Yeah, that's true. Uh, also, can you give some information about the current situation in Finland? Uh, regarding the, uh, the, the pandemic, um, the situation is rather good. Uh, the latest uh, actions that our government took in the society, they are uh, quite efficient and the, the amount of cases has, has decreased or let's, see, let's say that the peak, uh, we are at the peak at the moment, I, I believe so. And the amount of cases, amount of people being uh, uh, treated in hospitals is starting to decrease slowly. So. I'm hoping to open up the society a little bit more within a couple of weeks. Uh, let's hope that there will not be a second wave for the for the virus. Most likely it will happen, but uh, let's hope that we are able to keep, uh, keep it uh, very well uh, restricted and limited. Thank you. Uh, now I want to focus sport. Yep. Uh, many leagues are suspended, as you know, and sports clubs have some financial issues because they cannot get profit from sponsors or broadcasting. So can you evaluate the process for sport industry and what kind of future is waiting for us? Yes, you are completely right with that. So that the sports and, and the business of sports is in big troubles, so to say, at the moment. And... Um, because there is no event, so there is no main business for the sports at the moment. And I think that the uh, the future is bright for those organizations who can adapt to the situation uh, through digital applications and digital softwares. So currently, as there is no um, events taking place, uh, all the sports organizations throughout the world, they need to be creative, finding new ways to create value around the brand, around the, uh, the core business that they have. And uh, it's not easy. Uh, all the organizations have been forced to the situation. Um, luckily, there are some good news. For instance, in Germany, um, they are planning on opening up the, the Bundesliga mm. uh, sometime in May. So they, they would be returning back to playing the games at least and then be broadcasted the, the, the fans all around the world. We have very good examples of uh, different solutions to to keep on going. Uh, and uh, one example came from the Denmark, from FC Midtjylland, that they, they had this drive-in stands for people and fans who would like to come to see the game next to the stadium from their own car. So the, the sports organizations can be very creative in this situation, which is very good. And uh, um, But for sure, there will be lots of financial damage for them that is that would happen unfortunately but um yeah utilizing digital 
solutions, digital environments to engage with fans and consumers, trying to um, develop new kinds of ways to uh, uh, create value for the people through uh, product development, service development. That That is the key at the moment. And hopefully this situation will uh, uh, end up delivering new new uh, business models for sports organizations, lasting business models for sports organizations in the future as well. Thank you. Uh, you talked about sport events and digitalization, and I want to ask a question about eSport. What do you think about eSport? Do you accept it as a sport? And also, can we say that all this situation is an opportunity for eSport and gaming industry? Yes, that is a very valid question and good question. Uh, esports is born digital, so therefore, uh, basically, the situation is not that harmful for the esports sector and industry. Um, I read an article a couple, a couple of days ago that was discussing actually the same topic as well. And, uh, and when we talk about gaming and the gaming industry, that uh has increased tremendously and this is an excellent opportunity for game developers and, and streaming platforms to uh gain new subscribers uh create new awareness uh reach new audiences and, uh, and for that that kind of um business development um but when we talk about esports we're talking about competitive gaming uh, then that is actually a little bit trickier because in esports, significant share of the business comes also from events, live events, where people go and see uh, the players themselves. And even though uh, some of the leagues are totally online leagues uh, and uh, they play the games and the series and leagues online, uh, that part of the business is still alive and kicking, so to say, and there is a pressure to grow exactly that part of the business. But as events are canceled for, I don't know for how long time, uh, that has has had an effect on the, the, the business of professional esports teams. And therefore, even they need to be uh, creative in the situation, finding new ways to, uh, to create value for sponsors and partners, for instance, through online gaming and online events. Um, whether esports is a sport or not, uh, that's a, a little bit tricky question. And if you think about sports, the definition of the word of sports, um, in, in that terms, esports doesn't really fit to the traditional definition of sports. So it's lacking the physical activity within doing the sport. But in other terms, if you think about the esports from the perspective of uh, competitive gaming, com uh, competition, uh, uh, thriving for excellence and, and training, practicing, um, and uh, you could say that esports is definitely sports. It is. It has uh, uh, institutionalized leagues, uh, institutionalized uh, framework, so to say, for the business, for the competition itself. And um, what's lacking from esports is this kind of federations and governing bodies. So the, uh, so the basic foundation of this sport is, is a little bit different from if we talk about football, ice hockey, or, or uh, baseball, or some other so it's traditional sports, which are governed by uh, international federations and national federations. But in overall, uh, esports can be considered a sport. In my opinion, it, it should be. Uh, it's a different kind of sport. Uh, it has a similar kind of situation as motorsport has, let's say, 30, 40 years ago, uh, 1970s, 1980s, when there's a general debate where the motor sport is, is sports. People, men and women, are just sitting in their cars and driving. It's not. It's not very physical in that in that sense. But it requires uh, practicing, also physical and mental practicing, just like esports. And therefore, in that context, I would say that yes, it is sports. Thank you. So we can say that the common part of uh, traditional sport and e-sport is competition. So, 
Yes. What do you think about that? One day, can we see e-games in Olympic games, e-sports? That, that is also a good question. Um, I would say that there is a very big contradiction between the values of Olympics and esports. Esports is more or less commercial uh, phenomenon, so to say. So the, the main purpose why esports exists is to build a business, to build uh, um, a network of players and gamers who are willing to invest money in, in that aspect and uh, they might be professionalized in, in playing games or then they might be doing it just for fun and uh, not for their uh, uh, for the living and uh, Olympics instead it has a very strong value uh, foundation for the uh, operations and activities that happens under the Olympics um, uh, society so to say or in the Olympics community. And I would say that these values do not fit very easily. And therefore, um, I would actually turn the question vice versa, whether esports ever wants to be part of Olympics uh, or do they want to kind of follow their own paths and, and uh, create their, no, their own ecosystem, their own ways to operate the business and operate the sports. I would say that that might be the the most probable future for esports instead of uh, trying to um, fit the, the sports uh, the Olympic values and Olympic uh, community. Thank you. Actually, I have the same ideas with you about the topic. So, lastly, I want to ask a question about the Yomk University and Erasmus Exchange process. As you know, I'm an exchange student here. I love here, but also I want to hear some words from you. So can you please give some information about the sport management program at Young? And do you want to say anything to potential exchange students? Okay, yeah, definitely. Um, Young University of Applied Sciences is uh, located in Finland, in Yvaskula. Uh, we are the capital of central Finland. And uh, with uh, uh, 140,000 inhabitants uh, in Yvaskula, in the city of Yvaskula, we consider Yvaskula as the capital of sports in Finland. Uh, as we have Yvaskula University has the only sports science faculty located in Finland and in Yamk University of Applied Sciences, we have been focusing on the business of sports and, uh, and uh, marketing and management of uh, sports organizations and uh, Yvaskila is a very nice city quite quite small city in, in a worldwide scale but a lot of students I think there is 30 40,000 students in the city so pretty vibrant city in that sense during the winter time as well and uh, we have been operating roughly about 10 years now with our sport management program and all the courses are taught in English in order to uh, receive international students such as you as well uh, to uh, enrich the, the environment, bring out new perspectives. And uh, of course, we, we see that the sports is, a, is a, a global phenomenon. So we want to be providing the, the best features that we have and best competences that we can deliver on the international students as well as as well as for the for our own local students but yes we are hoping uh, as much exchange students as possible to come to the Yamk in Yvaskra um, we do our best that the students enjoy their time they have a good learning experience they have the possibility to see uh, perhaps some northern lights in Lapland as well during the winter time I'm not sure if you, if you had the possibility to go there this time but uh, yeah, I, I like the city a lot. This is the city where I, I was born. I've been raised and living in the city for my whole life. So um, it's I like to travel. I like to go away from the city, but I always love to come back to the city as well. So this is a good place to be. Yeah, thank you. And also Northern Lights uh, are amazing. I couldn't catch a clear one, but I, I can guess how amazing they are. Yeah. So that was my last question. Uh, okay. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for sharing your knowledge with us. And do you want to add anything else? 
Oh, well, stay healthy, uh, stay safe, take care of the, the closest ones and family and friends and uh, uh, enjoy the summer as much as you can. <laughs> that's, that's my final greetings to everybody. And thank you, Sedan, as well. Yeah. Again, thank you for being with us and stay safe.